Dear Paul, ladies and gentlemen, please, uh, I have to apologize for my Bavarian accent, <laughs> but <laughs> I hope it is understandable. Uh, when I prepared this talk, I came across nearly all the topics which were in Noble Paul's tango. Uh, but I did not know of this tango. So I will guide you now through, in chronological order, what I remember Paul has done. And my first uh, slide would be one which uh, summarizes my perception of what we scientists are doing. We are always shaping and will shape mankind's history. But we don't know when, by which results. When you look back into a, in your own scientific history, some publications you rated under ferner liefen, we would say in German, uh, become more important than the others where you attached a lot. Now our technological progress shapes the entire planet. That's why we have the Anthropocene. The role of scientists is to point to measures to reduce the footprint of Homo sapiens. I think we can underline this statement. And Paul Crutzen is one of the key players in this global endeavor. And I will uh, report only on a few of his achievements with a focus on the impact uh, on Germany, because we were jointly, during this window of opportunity, in an enquete commission of the German parliament, which is a fantastic way of getting scientific results into the policy arena, and not to the government directly, but to the deciding body, the parliament. And uh, we were 13 people in this uh, parliament commission from the political side and 13 from so-called the expert side. But Paul and myself, we were maybe the most independent of these experts because we were not liaised with any political party. And Bernd Schmidbauer and Michael Müller, the, the speakers of this morning, they realized rapidly that we both are independent and then we had to go with them to the press conferences. Whenever there was a, a question close to science, we were the responding people and no longer the scientists, uh, the uh, politicians. This showed how close the relation was at this time. Let me start, I'm going in chronological order with the nuclear winter. This was only touched once this morning. But when you look at the imprint on global policy making, it may have been the most important first uh, yeah, move in this direction by Paul in 1982. So 31 years ago, uh, the famous Swedish paper Ambio published uh, this abstract. I am not asking you to read it in full. The atmosphere after a nuclear war, twilight at noon. And it remembers me uh, what once Christian Junge, the predecessor of Paul, said to me. If you are the first, the order of magnitude must be correct. If you are second, a factor of two or three is necessary. So the error bars have to shrink. But then we give it to the engineers. <laughs> and this is exactly <laughs> what has happened with uh, this uh, nuclear winter topic. Uh, the first one was... Uh, not very close to what really 
uh, we think nowadays, I'm now showing you uh, Robox uh, regional climate variants uh, since eight, uh, uh, climate variants of the globe between uh, 1880 and nowadays, and what would happen if only five megatons of black carbon are added to the atmosphere. You get a massive cooling. And it reminds me of Paul's statement when he argued for a stratospheric sulfur layer to be investigated in more detail when he was accused of being now an advocate of geoengineering. This would happen also, but in other, because of other reasons, if we would have less uh, activity in getting a stratospheric aerosol layer, we would get a heat shock of the system going into the other direction. But you see from uh, uh, climate model calculations that we would have, even with five megatons of uh, black carbon, a long-lasting climate change issue. Not only for one year, but for several years. Let me now go to the 1980s uh, uh, and focus on Germany. Germany was a laggard in climate change policy. And when you read what I wrote here, the Secretary General of WMO, Patrick Godwin Obasi, invites the Federal Republic of Germany to the constitutional meeting of IPCC in November 1988 in Geneva by writing to its permanent representative in Germany, the president of Deutsche Wetterdienst. The invitation letter sleeps for months on the president's desk. After forwarding to the Ministry for Research and Technology, the letter gets a handwritten mark. One scientist suffices, or in German, ein Wissenschaftler reicht. And I had to represent for the first time in my life my country officially at a UN conference in November 1988. I went back home, was uh, very angry about uh, the behavior of my country because Bert Bolin, who had become the uh, chairman of IPCC, told me when I asked for a seat in working group one and three for the Federal Republic of Germany, Hartmut, it is so difficult, you are here alone. Look at the, uh, <laughs> at the different dele uh, delegations, six, eight people from a single country, and you are the only representative of your country. But later on, uh, this has any, anyway been changed. There were no memberships in certain working groups any longer. Then we both came to uh, the Enquete Commission, whose full title is Precaution to Protect the Atmosphere, Vorsorge zum Schutz der Erdatmosphäre, an enquete commission which lasted only for one period of our parliament, in this case from 1988 to 1990, so the, in 1987 uh, it was decided, but really working started in 1988, of the 11th German parliament. We were at the beginning 11, uh, later 13, because uh, I was not a member at the beginning. And I got the first draft on the enhanced greenhouse effect, and it came back blue to uh, Bernd Schmidbauer instead of black, uh, because I had corrected too much. Then he invited me and Hermann Flohn to uh, uh, correct this uh, sub-chapter. And at the end of the debate, he asked me, wouldn't you like to become a member of this enquete commission? And I said, yes. But he said, but unfortunately, my party cannot ask you to come because we need an international lawyer. And 
He is a member of the Christian Democratic Party, so the Social Democrats will ask you to come into this Enquête Commission. And both Paul and myself, we were the independent uh, experts asked by the Social Democrats to come into the Enquête Commission. The meetings and hearings took place roughly twice per month. This is really activity uh, for two to three years. Why did Paul Krutzen and myself become members of the Enquête Commission? Firstly, this is a bit of history, because two scientific so societies, the physicists and the meteorologists, published a memorandum called Warnung vor drohenden weltweiten Klimaänderungen durch den Menschen in March 1987. Secondly, the Free State of Bavaria requested via our second chamber, the Bundesrat, a scientific climate advisory board for the federal government, which has been established soon. And I became the chairman of this committee because I uh, was a compromise between northern and southern Germany. <laughs> because first there was a debate on uh, a chairman from northern Germany and the southern Germans did not like this and I was the compromise candidate. Thirdly, the general debate on climate change after the memorandum led the parliament to decide to establish an enquête commission on the topics ozone depletion, tropical deforestation, and global anthropogenic climate change. These were the main uh, causes for this uh, enquête commissions, and anyway, some members of parliament wanting it. Now, to the outcome of this enquête commission, I call it enforcing the Montreal Protocol. And it was Paul, who was fundamental in writing what later got the government position when renegotiating the Montreal Protocol or enforcing it. Uh, I remember exactly when uh, Paul and I sat aside in one, during one of these meetings and corrected all the uh, 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 text. In this case, it was only for the Montreal Protocol, but later also for climate change. And this was what we wrote, production and use of CFCs to be reduced by 95% until 2000. Timetable how to reach this goal. Inclusion of further chlorine containing substances into the Montreal Protocol. It was Paul who had been responsible for it to a large extent. Most proposals were accepted in 1990 in London at the Conference of the Parties and later became international law. That's why I call Paul a, a person doing what we call in German Weltinnenpolitik, so global governance, because all these uh, treaties, these international treaties, are at the beginning normally rather soft law and later uh, become decisive. And for the Montreal Protocol, we can speak of a real success story. And for the enforcements, both in 1990 and later in 1992, Paul was uh, of uh, high importance. An example of an environmental impact study for a German space shuttle now. We had the dream in Germany of having an own space shuttle called Sanger Roman II. And 300 million Deutschmarks had been given for a pilot study. And finally, the politicians said, but we need an environmental impact study. And 300,000 Deutschmarks were given to the Max Planck Institute for Chemistry in Mainz, for the Max Planck Institute for Meteorology in Hamburg, and to the Jülich Center uh, in the institute where uh, uh, Dieter Klei worked. And our finding was 
main result of this impact study, much less polluting than the American Space Shuttle, but if used as an intercontinental hypersonic aircraft, which would fly at 26 kilometers with Mach 7, with only 50 Sanger II engines, would become a major threat to the global stratospheric ozone layer. And we drew strongly from Paul's experience from the early 1970s, where a similar study for a, uh, for a supersonic air transport system in the, US, in the USA was conducted, but at this time, uh, not with Mach 7, but Mach uh, 1 to 2. And we, we published it. And you can travel from here to Speyer, to the Technical Museum, to look at Sanger 2, the prototype or the model. Uh, so you now realize it was an airplane, and on its back, a shuttle. But uh, in reality, it was meant as an airplane going in two hours from Germany to Australia. But it never was realized because soon it was seen it's too costly. Not Paul and myself and Dieter Klei killed this system, but lack of money. Let me now come to geo or climate engineering question mark. Uh, Paul asked me in 2007 whether he should publish such uh, a paper. I said yes, and he was strongly criticized. However, what he really wanted has happened. More research to find more about the stratosphere and its role in climate, and eventually all the drawbacks of this special type of geoengineering. This is the situation now. And some of us criticizing him very strongly at this time uh, should apologize now. His intention was, let us really look into it. And then we will find too much uh, interference with the climate system, uh, the heat shock when we stop, and all these problems which come up. Now. As a typical scientist, uh, I am pointing to one of our main topics, trace substances dominate the function of the Earth system. This is true for many facets of the Earth system, not only for climate. Sometimes PPTs are more important than PPMs, or even percentages. And in this context, I would see a new emerging substance group where we do not know a lot, but where we would have a possibility to look into how tiny amounts can change a lot in our atmosphere. These are freezing nuclei. Roughly every thousands aerosol uh, particle is a freezing nucleus only. And uh, now we can talk about 10 to the minus 12 or 14 in volume or 10 to the minus 11 in uh, mass. And I will show a result of my own research now. Phytoplankton changes clouds and precipitation of the Southern Ocean. From satellite data we could derive, it was Olaf Krüger and myself, that uh, plotted against the number of cloud condensation nuclei, which are strongly related to phytoplankton activity, we see uh, significant changes in many of uh, environmental parameters. For example, long wave flux at the top of the atmosphere, cloud fractions, the dark blue, cloud effective radius, white, cloud optical thickness, yellow, precipitation, black, and short wave flux, at the top of the atmosphere. And we are talking about tiny changes in the amount of certain substances in the atmosphere. And they have an impact in the Southern Ocean on so many environmental factors. This is far from being solved. All I'm showing is that we have to deal with extremely low concentrations of substances uh, sometimes. 
Now, Paul's recent attempts to have an imprint on global policy making. It is his attempt to reverse wrong climate policies. When you look around in Bavaria, especially, about 15% of agricultural land is now dedicated to fast-growing maize plantations. And Paul, when he was on a sabbatical or after he had retired uh, in Yasa in Luxembourg in Austria, he wrote about the N2O release from agro-biofuel production negates global warming reduction by replacing fossil fuels. When I was invited to the Bavarian government on this topic, and I showed what you have found, Paul, uh, an additional member of this group, interministerial working group, said, it's very clear that Paul Crutzen's results are a total exaggeration. So he just wiped it away. And I said, do you have uh, papers showing me? Uh, then he was silent. But it is the way sometimes it is handled. But later came these two other publications I have listed here. And then when you read this uh, conclusion of the last review paper, uh, it concludes by saying 4% of all the nitrogen fertilizers applied will finally end up as uh, N2O in the atmosphere, creating a major problem. Or, in other words, I'm saying it now in German, Biogasanlagen mit Mais gefüttert sind absolut kein Klimaschutz. And this is from your papers, mainly, but all the others now have uh, uh, used the same horn. I have to finish because uh, Paul sent us an email one or two days ago. Looking at your presentations, too many slides. Please reduce. So I did. <laughs> but, but I need a, a few seconds now to read what I have written here as the last slide. We live in the Anthropocene, and the present young generation might be the first one reducing the per capita impact on the Earth system, a prerequisite for a sustainable future. Paul Crutzen has led the foundation more strongly than nearly all of us for this. He has influenced Weltinnenpolitik. Thank you for listening.